I don't know about you, but I am not surprised at all that people finally took notice to the terrible work that John Ridley is doing on Black Panther. This week, issue number 13 came out and it's caused a little bit of controversy. Apparently, people feel that Black Panther was nerfed a little bit, but the issues with this comic book go a lot deeper than that. Black Panther T'Challa is written totally out of character. Steve Rogers, Captain America, is written totally out of character because John Ridley is not a comic book writer. He is not there to tell superhero stories. He's there to tell the stories that he wants to and just bend and break characters around his will because he's John Ridley. He did 12 Years a Slave, and I guess that gives him carte blanche to just go in there and destroy everything he gets his hands on. He did do some work in comic books before he got his big break with 12 Years a Slave when he wrote that. He did write some stuff for Wildstorm and the Authority and all that kind of stuff. But generally speaking, if you speak to Wildstorm fans and Authority fans specifically, they will tell you John Ridley probably has the worst run of comic books in the history of those characters in those universes. The guy just is never going to be a good, competent comic book writer. But Marvel and DC keep giving him these gigs on these really premium characters because he wrote 12 Years a Slave. Yes, he got a lot of Oscar consideration. Yes, his work was lauded. He's had a couple of other successes, I guess, before then. I personally liked Three Kings. I guess he wrote the story and then it was adapted to a screenplay. He also did Undercover Brothers. So it's not like this guy was exactly hitting it out of the park and batting 1,000 when it came to really good explorations of characters and stuff like this. The guy has already gone out of his way to destroy Superman, did everything that he could to tarnish the reputation of Superman in the annals of DC Comics history, just go back and start changing things. Now he's decided to destroy Black Panther. Doc and I have reviewed a couple of issues of this, and we were like, this stuff is just garbage. How can anyone read it? It turns out, for the most part, Nobody really is reading John Ridley's Black Panther comic book because he's not a comic book writer. And I think at this point, he's written enough over the past 24 months or so that he's pretty much out to comic book fans. They know that he doesn't give a crap about any of the characters. They know that he doesn't get any of the characters. And essentially, they have checked out. This is how competent John really is. Think about DC Comics and how stupid they must be. He has a Batman series that is somehow outside of the top 150. The only other Batman series selling worse is Batman Fortress, and that is one of the worst Batman comics of all times. He also has another Batman-related series that actually debuted almost outside the top 200. GCPD, The Blue Wall, debuted at like 192. A Batman-related comic book released by DC almost debuted outside the top 200. Stop telling me John really is a superstar. He's not really a superstar in Hollywood, and he's absolutely not a superstar in comic books whatsoever. If people are unaware of what I'm talking about, let's get into this. I got pinned this tweet specifically talking about the issues with Black Panther number 13. So I was reading Black Panther 13 by John Ridley when I came across the most offensive page I've read in this bad run on the character. Here we have Steve Rogers, Captain America, telling his close friend, allegedly, T'Challa, to go back to Africa or get beat up. Marvel, what's up? And I saw some people that were responding to that tweet said, oh, you're taking that way out of context. That's not what happens. Oh, that's exactly what happens. Captain America shows up, confronts T'Challa Black Panther because he's, I guess, he's trying to stop his friend who's running a terrorist organization. Captain America has decided, no, the Avengers are going to do it. You step aside. And if you don't go back to Africa, I'm going to kick your ass right here on the spot. That's exactly what happens. Does that feel like Captain America to you? We've seen plenty of times over the past decades, even within the last year or two, where a member of the Avengers maybe gets out of line a little bit, maybe doesn't act like they should as a hero, and Steve Rogers almost always gives them the benefit of a doubt. He says, you know what? You say you can handle it, I will monitor, and you can go handle it on your own. If I have to step in, I will. He never, ever, ever acts like this, especially to his friends. These guys are like co-leaders of the Avengers. For some reason, John really has decided that Black Panther being a part of the Avengers is like a problem, whatever. So he created some made-up rift between Black Panther and, and the Avengers, specifically Steve Rogers, so there would be conflict, which is fine. Not every conflict within comic books just has to be absolute amazeballs. But once you create the conflict and you get to the payoff, which is what this is, it actually has to make a little bit of sense. You actually have to think about the characters, who they are, what their relationship is, what their history is, and what universe they're actually operating in. These characters are not operating in the Marvel 616. 
They're clearly operating in John Ridley's head, and that is it. This dude is just writing really, really bad fanfic. I do not understand why Marvel and DC Comics keep paying this guy. Nobody in Hollywood is paying this guy. He hasn't had anything of substance, anything close to a hit since 2013. It's been 10 years since he's riding on the legacy of the one thing he ever wrote that was actually good. Let's talk about the details about what Steve Rogers has to say to his good friend T'Challa, the Black Panther, in this comic book that has a lot of people very pissed off. T'Challa, I told you the Avengers would handle things, so you can either go back to Wakanda or stick around and get your butt kicked. Up to you. Tell me he did not just say that. Please somehow explain to me that Steve Rogers didn't just say, go back to Africa or I'm going to kick your ass. I defy anyone that has ever actually read a Captain America comic book starring Steve Rogers to say that is in character. That is not Steve Rogers. That is not Captain America. And that is certainly not the relationship between Captain America and Black Panther. These two have been fighting together for decades at this point. Steven, I'm trying to stop Jai and his warriors. You are the reason Jai and his warriors exist. Their course of action was never my intention. Your intention doesn't matter. You screw up and nobody trusts you to fix things. So one more time, you surrendering or you taking the butt whipping. It has been building to this between us, Stephen. I will not go quietly. Okay. Captain America, Steve Rogers, is one of the most empathetic characters in the entire Marvel Universe to the point where it's pretty much a character fault. He will absolutely trust his friends. He will give them the benefit of a doubt and he will back them even when they're doing the wrong thing if they are guided correctly in this one. And obviously, T'Challa Black Panther trying to stop his friend that's heading up a terrorist organization does have the right intentions. He doesn't want his friend to get killed, and he feels like he has to handle this business on his own. That's why he created his own team of superheroes to go handle this without the Avengers. Steve Rogers, Captain America, would trust him, or he would say, you know what? I'll let you do this, but I'm coming with you. I'm not going to let you do this alone because you need some backup on this one. But no, they've decided, just because John Reilly is an absolute idiot and doesn't know anything about the characters, that they're going to throw down over the fate of T'Challa. Because he only had two choices, according to Cap. Get your ass back to Africa, or I'm going to kick it. And we get some more weird interactions between the two. After Captain America beats him up the very first time, he kicks his butt multiple times in this comic book, which doesn't feel right whatsoever. Black Panther might not be able to beat Captain America, but those two would have to fight a very long time to actually have a winner declared. And by then, I think the Avengers would break it up. Captain America defeating Black Panther this easily multiple times is absolute bullshit. I do not know what John Ridley was thinking. Steven, I have to stop Jai. You're still wounded, still recovering. You couldn't take me. How are you going to take Jai and his whole army? I must try. What you must do is stay down. Please, T'Challa, just stay down. I can't. You know I can't. Yeah, I do. As he turns his head in disgust at T'Challa the Black Panther. So let's get this over with. And he proceeds to absolutely beat the living piss out of Black Panther again. And this is really just the cherry on top of a shit Sunday that has been John Reilly's Black Panther run, which started out pretty interesting. I liked the first few issues. I thought they were doing some pretty interesting things there. All of a sudden, Wakanda is going to become democratic. How does that affect T'Challa? How does that affect the monarchy? Does he just go along with it? That is interesting confrontation within a comic book. And I think it's something that a lot of people could actually see coming and wanted to see a payoff for. It never really happened. Sure, there are a few issues dedicated to it, but it never actually got interesting because John Ridley didn't want to actually explore the story that he had set up that was worth reading. He had to go off and introduce the colonialists, the white supremacist aliens or whoever to show up with the Buffalo Soldier and all this stuff so that he could cause a rift between Steve and Black Panther so Steve could call him boy and tell him to go back where he came from. Just really weird stuff. I don't know what Marvel Comics are thinking. I would definitely like to hear from you guys. If you're a Black Panther fan, does this feel like Black Panther? If you're a Captain America fan, does this feel like Captain America? On both accounts, I say it doesn't feel like either of the characters. This is like Elseworlds, but worse, it's just lame-ass weird fanfic. This took place in John Ridley's mind. It never felt like the Marvel Comics universe, and that's a problem today, not just with Marvel Comics, not just with John Ridley. 
It's with DC Comics and a lot of publishers right now. They are not hiring the best comic book writers that they can, and we're getting crap like Black Panther number 13 on pretty much a weekly basis at this point. I've been talking about John Ridley from time to time here on the channel. I'm not a fan. I personally do not think that he could write a comic book to save his life. He's just not cut out for that. I think Schindler's List is one of the most moving movies I've ever watched in my life. I would not want the writer of Schindler's List to write a Captain America story. And it turns out I don't want the guy that did 12 Years a Slave to do a Black Panther story. He just can't do it. He doesn't have it in him to try and do anything heroic with these characters. He's always just tearing them down, breaking the characters, and doing his own thing rather than telling good, compelling stories. This is not isolated to Marvel, as I said recently. When he did the history of the DC Universe, this man went out of his way to let you and everyone know how much he hated Superman. If you haven't seen this and what he had to say about Superman, besides just having him raped, definitely check this video out. If you don't see it there, there's also a link in the video description.